right friends welcome back to part 2 of question and answer session and uh, this is week 22 from 25th to 31st may we have already discussed 27 questions in part 1 and let us discuss another 27 questions in this part name the bank which posted its first quarterly loss since 1991 since 1991 it is the first time that this bank reported quarterly loss the bank here is bank of india vijay lakshmi iyer is the chairman and managing director and it clearly indicates the problems associated with public sector banks they are facing basically increased gross nps the first problem being faced by public sector banks is increased gross nps the second problem is casa deposits are reducing casa deposits are profitable deposits for banks casa deposits are reducing for several banks at the same time gross npas are increasing because of this several public sector banks are not able to achieve desired profitability and first quarterly loss after 24 years indicates there is something wrong with the banking system second one as per the rbi regulation the maximum amount which a ppi account holder can hold is what is ppi ppi is a prepaid payment instrument prepaid payment instrument airtel money m cash i cash these are all uh, types of uh, prepaid payment instruments it is it may be a digital wallet you are holding money and you can have any type of purchase with the digital wallet that is called a prepaid payment instrument and the maximum amount which you can hold under ppi account is rupees 1 lakh the maximum amount which anyone can hold under ppi account that means through prepaid payment instruments is 1 lakh rupees please don't forget the maximum limit is rupees 1 lakh no one can hold beyond that limit look into the next one rbi proposed ppi mts ppi means prepaid payment instrument mts means mass transit system you have local trains in mumbai you have local trains or suburban trains in chennai and where people morning they will go to the workplace and evening they will travel back and there people stand in the queues for several minutes there people stand in the queues and precious time is lost keeping that in view rbi released a draft guidelines for ppi mts that means prepaid payment instruments to facilitate travel in local trains in urban areas is planned by reserve bank of india and this is called ppi mts these are in a draft stage and rbi asked opinion from various stakeholders recently draft guidelines were released by reserve bank of india that means once you have ppi mts smart card once you have ppi mts smart card you need not to stand in the queue to take a ticket simply you have to tap and go the amount will be automatically deducted just like in delhi metro you have to just tap and go the amount will be automatically deducted that is a ppi mts and these are likely to be introduced in suburban systems across the country expenditure management commission is going to submit its report by december 2015 the new government wants to reduce expenditure they want to rationalize the subsidies they want to reduce the subsidies with that in mind expenditure management commission was established and it is going to give its report by december 2015 and it may suggest various ways how to reduce subsidies how to reduce expenditure and the committee chairman is bimal jalan bimal jalan committee that is expenditure management commission is going to give its report by december 2015 banks should implement 
net stable funding ratio from 1st January 2018 as stated by Reserve Bank of India. Net stable funding ratio NSFR stands for net stable funding ratio. As per Basel norms, as per Basel 3 stipulations, which are basically to avoid the risks in the banking system, there are three things banks have to adopt. First and the foremost is capital adequacy ratio. Capital adequacy ratio, that means to undertake business, they have to have minimum certain percentage of capital. Second thing is liquidity coverage ratio or LCR. Liquidity coverage ratio is how much cash is required, how much liquidity is required to perform banking operations for 30 days must be available with the bank. To perform banking operations for 30 days, how much liquidity is required that must be available with the banks that is liquidity coverage ratio. Third one is net stable funding ratio or NSFR that looks into the requirement of funds for one year horizon. For one year to manage their operations, how much funding is required and how much is available for one year they will look into that is a net stable funding ratio. Please don't forget these three things. They are as per Basel III norms. First one is a capital adequacy ratio. Second one is a liquidity coverage ratio. Third one is a net stable funding ratio. Please look into the next one. Name the country which was removed by United States of America from its list of state sponsors of terrorism. Countries will declare certain countries as state sponsors of terrorism. That means, when the terrorism is supported by government, that means previously in the opinion of United States of America, Cuba government itself is supporting terrorism. When governments feel that some country is supporting terrorism, then they will keep that country in the list of state sponsors of terrorism. Now. United States of America removed Cuba from the state sponsors of terrorism and in the last classes we have discussed the diplomatic relations between United States of America and Cuba are going to start after a gap of more than 50 years. The diplomatic relations between Cuba and United States of America ended in the year 1961 and subsequently now only United States of America and Cuba are going to have diplomatic relations and now United States of America removed Cuba from the state sponsors of terrorism and please don't forget Cuba is very close to United States of America as far as geographical distance is concerned and state sponsors of terrorism list as maintained by United States of America Still some countries are there like Syria, Sudan who are in the list of state sponsors of terrorism. Look into the next one. Name the Indian Institute of Technology where there is uproar over the banning of a student organization Ambedkar Periyar Student Circle. There is a lot of hue and cry because IIT banned that organization recently. Ambedkar Periyar Student Circle. It is the one of the students organizations of uh, IIT Madras and on the allegations that they criticized the Prime Minister, the student organization was banned and subsequently IIT Madras director clarified that no ban was imposed and only explanation was asked from that student outfit. But there is a lot of hue and cry with regard to the freedom of speech and expression which is guaranteed as per constitution. Look into the next one. This Atali village. This Atali village is in Balabgad area in Faridabad district of Haryana where communal tensions broke out recently between two religious groups. Communal tensions recently broke out between 
two religious groups this atali village is uh, in faridabad district near balabghar please look into the next one the cost of which of the following increased rapidly due to the fall in production from 18.43 million tons to 17.38 million tons in the revised estimates the output of pulses is still reduced to 17 million tons previously they were estimated to be 18 million tons now in the revised estimate they were still reduced to 17 million tons and there is a shortfall of 4 to 5 million tons in pulses and we have to import these pulses from other countries and there is almost an increase of around 40 to 50 percent in the cost of pulses during the past one year the major concern is the production is still low and there is an apprehension that the cost of pulses may increase because the production is not up to the mark is not on the anticipated lines look into the next one india wants to ensure power for all india wants to ensure power for all by 2019 the government has got ambitious goals housing for all by 2022 swachh bharat by 2019 power for all by 2019 these are all the ambitious uh, programs of uh, government of india and at the same time they want to produce uh, 175000 megawatt of uh, renewable energy right these are all the ambitious programs of government of india let us hope them to materialize look into the next united states economy shrunk by 0.7% during the first quarter of 2015 in the january march quarter the gdp shrunk by 0.7% brazil economy shrunk by 0.2% russian economy shrunk by 1.9% what it indicates there is global downturn and world is not out of uh, this uh, cycle and several countries are experiencing downturn in recent times united states economy shrunk by 0.7% during the first 3 months of 2015 Uttar Pradesh Food Safety and Drug Administration recalled Maggie packets of Nestle India Maggie noodles are famous across the country recently Uttar Pradesh government recalled Maggie packets of Nestle India due to the excess quantity of lead as well as MSG MSG is a monosodium glutamate MSG is monosodium glutamate and in the tests conducted by Uttar Pradesh Food Safety and Drug Administration almost 6 to 7 times of lead was found than the permissible limit and nestle india says that they are not mixing any monosodium glutamate and several states are banning this maggi and we will discuss in detail in the lecture part of 23rd week about this incident look into the next one g satish reddy was posted the scientific advisor to the defense minister famous scientist with the drdo for several years and he was posted the scientific advisor to the defense minister look into the next one name the country with whom india signed a joint vision statement for 5 years to enhance bilateral defense cooperation to enhance bilateral defense cooperation for 5 years recently india signed joint vision statement with the vietnam india signing 5 year bilateral defense cooperation agreement with vietnam assumes a significance in view of the fact china is reclaiming practically silence in south china sea and china is going to establish their naval base in that area there are reports china reclaiming practically silence is not acceptable to vietnam as several countries are claiming their ownership over those islands and in view of the dispute between vietnam and other countries with china india's signing of agreement with vietnam for 5 years bilateral defense cooperation assumes a significance please look into the picture our defense minister and the defense minister of vietnam signing the agreement in this regard look into the next one george eo named the new chancellor of 
Nalanda University. Nalanda University is uh, situated near uh, Rajgir in Bihar and it is around 100 kilometers from Patna. Once upon a time, it was the famous Buddhist learning center. Now, government of India, with the cooperation of some other countries, establishing this Nalanda University and for Nalanda University, George was named as the new chancellor and he belongs to Singapore. Last year, the first chancellor was Amartya Sen, but for the second time, government has not cleared his name. Now, George Yeo of Singapore is nominated as the new chancellor of Nalanda University. Nalanda University is in Rajgir in Bihar and the visitor of the university is the president. Please don't forget, visitor of Nalanda University is president, the chancellor is George Evo who was recently appointed. A 7.8 magnitude earthquake struck the coast of Japan. Fortunately, not much damage and Please don't forget, Japan is in the ring of fire we have already discussed in the previous week's lecture. Look into the next one. Recently, 4,200 migrants struck up in Mediterranean Sea were rescued by Italy. We have already discussed that several migrants from North Africa as well as Middle East are escaping to Europe and their boats are struck up because smugglers are abandoning the boats midway. And Italy recently rescued 4,200 migrants. Name the bank which launched online customer acquisition solution. OCAS means online customer acquisition solution. It is nothing but online platform to apply for home loans, car loans, education loans and personal loans. You can apply any type of loan through this online customer acquisition solution or OCAS, this was launched by State Bank of India. The name proposed for National Optic Fiber Network is Bharatnet. This National Optic Fiber Network, which was conceived by Government of India long back, the main purpose is to connect two and a half lakh villages with the broadband. Things are not going on expected lines so far. Less than 20,000 villages were connected with broadband. For implementing this project, PBNL Bharat, the Broadband Network Limited was established. It is not going on with expected pace. Under these circumstances, the new government appointed a committee headed by Sachin Arayana and based on his report, Government of India is contemplating certain steps to expedite the process of implementation of National Optic Fiber Network and the committee suggested the name as Bharatnet. The committee suggested the name as Bharatnet and the expenditure also got increased from 20,000 crores to 72,778 crores. Right friends, center is giving incentives for setting up of call centers under BPO scheme across the country. Government wants to create infrastructure for BPO call centers, which will ultimately create 1.5 lakh jobs annually. And government's financial incentive is rupees 498 crores of rupees. Please don't forget. Name the country which imposed entry ban against 89 European politicians, officials and military leaders. All of you are well aware, economic sanctions were imposed by Western countries on Russia. Economic sanctions were imposed by Western countries on Russia because of annexation of Crimea by Russia and now Russia retaliated and it imposed a ban against 89 European politicians, officials and military leaders. Right friends, look into the next one, name the country where thousands of people held peaceful marches in the capital. Thousands of people held peaceful marches in the capital. Capital is Caracas, country is Venezuela, Venezuela capital is Caracas. Recently, thousands of people held 
peaceful marches in the capital Caracas in protest against the arrest of opposition leaders for more than one year. In this country, opposition leaders and several prominent leaders are in the jails for more than one year and thousands of people took to the streets recently in the capital Caracas as they felt that the government is arresting several opposition leaders. Look into the next one. Government stated that it will make Maitri Express fully air-conditioned. It runs between Kolkata and Dhaka. Maitri Express is the train which runs between Kolkata and the Bangladesh capital Dhaka. The distance is around 400 kilometers and it takes around 10 hours. And government recently stated there is a proposal to make this entire train fully air conditioned. Please don't forget Maitri Express runs between Kolkata and Dhaka. It runs twice in a week. Look into the next one. No tobacco day is observed on 31st May. Several people are losing their lives day in and day out because of tobacco related diseases. And this 31st May is designated as a no tobacco day by World Health Organization. And Tobacco is the cause of several cancers also. Look into the next one. Government plans to achieve steel production of 300 million tons per annum by the year 2025. Steel production, government has got ambitious plans. The present steel production is around 100 million tons. Probably it is less than 100 million tons. Government wants to make it threefold from 100 million tons to 300 million tons within 10 years. Government wants to increase the steel production from 100 million tons to 300 million tons within 10 years. This is the ambitious target of government of India. And at the same time, please don't forget the steel production of sale. Sale means it is the public sector chain, Steel Authority of India Limited, which controls five major steel plants in the country. And its steel production is proposed to be increased from 25 million tons to 50 million tons during this period. Right friends, look into the next one. As per the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, Green Climate Fund is constituted. Green Climate Fund is constituted basically to assist developing countries. And the fund is proposed as 100 billion dollars. Developed countries will generously donate to this fund because they have already reached saturation as far as greenhouse gases are concerned. But lot more needs to be done for developing countries. With that intention, this Green Climate Fund was created by United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change and the fund proposed to be established is 100 billion dollars by the year 2020. But so far, less than 10 billion dollars was given by various countries so far. The total fund estimated to be pooled is 100 billion dollars by 2020. Look at the last question of this week, the market borrowings of central government. Central government borrows money from public to finance its fiscal deficit. Fiscal deficit is the difference between expenditure and income. To finance its fiscal deficit, government borrows from public. That is called market borrowing program. Last year, during the year 2014-15, government borrowed 5,92,000 crores of rupees. Government last year borrowed 5,92,000 crores of rupees and their target for 2015-16 market borrowing program is 6 lakh crores of rupees. During the year 2015-16, government of India is going to borrow 6 lakh crores of rupees from the market. With this, let us conclude part 2 of question and answer session. Have a nice day. Please do join for 23rd week. Thank you.